Um homem conta suas histórias tantas vezes que acaba por tornar-se as histórias que conta. Elas permanecem vivas mesmo depois de sua morte. E é assim que ele se torna imortal. Esta sentença foi escrita por Daniel Wallace no romance Peixe Grande, imortalizado no filme homônimo. E ela reflete um pouco a ideia deste programa. Um programa onde conversamos com pessoas comuns que têm histórias para contar. O Boas Histórias começa assim. Hoje, internacional, logo no primeiro programa, eu tenho aqui a convidada, que é a Farah Chama, uma palestina de 19 anos, e como ela uh, tem o idioma inglês como uma, uma, um idioma que o permite uma fluência maior, é em inglês que eu vou fazer este primeiro programa. Uh, Farah, you are a 19-year-old girl, Palestinian, born and raised in Dubai, far from your uh, motherland, I know. You decided to study law. After a year studying law at the famous Sorbonne University, you moved to political sciences. And that's for a reason I know you're going to be talking about it. Uh, aside from, from, from the political science, you also are involved with the written word, poetry. And you write poems in different languages, uh, in Arabic, in English, and in French. We're going to have a session on poetry. So, uh, let's start our program. Well, usually there's always this idea that Brazil is this very happy place where people, you know, play football and dance samba and are always on the beach. And uh, this was the idea that everyone had when I, when I started talking about Brazil and, you know, telling people that I'm, you know, that I'm coming to visit Brazil. Is Brazil shown on TV there somehow? Yes. Yes, there's always this Copacabana, Garota de Ipanema, all these ideas, all this, some of the music, and recently Nossa, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there was this idea that, you know, it's a happy place, you should go have fun, there's always this idea. But to me, it's, it's always deeper than that, it's always deeper than the general ideas everyone talk about, the things we see on TV are never the things I like to look forward to. So, you know, I came here with this will to, to look at more. And I did see, of course, the happy aspect, the, the, the aspect of the povo alegre. I did see that, but of course, there was so much more. And about the cultural shock, you know, coming from Dubai, a place that is very diverse, where there are Brazilians, it wasn't very shocking for me to come here. Um, you know, I, I, just, I just developed a new interest in, in, you know, in learning the language, in, in meeting the people, and in, in learning more about the culture. How long have you been here? I've been here for three months. Three months. Three months. Mm. And I understand you speak some Portuguese. Yes, I do. I've been learning. I've, I started learning alone in Dubai uh, with a Brazilian friend of mine, and I did three months in a school here in Santos. Um, este, em português agora, ok? Tá bom. Uh, este amigo <laughs> seu em Dubai, ele falava português com você, ou ele foi um professor? Em Dubai? É, ela, ela é brasileira, esta ah. amiga. Uh -huh. Minha, ela é brasileira, então... E você... O que, que te trouxe aqui ao Brasil? Ah, é, é meu pai. Meu pai mora aqui, é por isso que eu, eu vim para cá. Mas eu decidi de aproveitar do fato que ele está aqui, de aprender a língua e de é, a cultura também. Eu eu não vou deixar você ficar sofrendo tanto, ok? Em português. É, Se falar português, sim. Yes, that'll be better. <laughs> Much faster. You mentioned the joy of Brazilian people. Um, you expected. Did you identify that when you were here? Yes. Very much. And this is what I find very interesting about this country. There is this simplicity in, in people and there is this, this general joy. People just want to go to the beach and want to have fun and, and, and that. This aspect is interesting. But of course, I can also find it as a negative aspect. And we can, we can maybe talk about that in a bit. This happiness, this could be a bit oblivious maybe. I can use this term. Okay. And why is that? Because it's, it's, it's very good to be, to be you know, joyful, but I, I think sometimes life needs more depth. You need to look more into, you know, the situation, you know, the political situation, the, the social situation, you know, in order to be, to be able to develop an intellectual aspect. I always say, I think there is an intellectual aspect lacking mm -hmm. here. Well, I could comment here that, um, of course, you are in a beach town, Santos, and you have one kind of people here. But maybe if you go and visit the countryside or other cities around the country, it's a different thing. Yes, are. yes. And of course, you have to take that into account, right? Oh, of course. You. I have to take into account that I've been only here for three months, mm -hmm. that I haven't seen a lot, maybe, that I haven't 
you know, visited the places that have the intellectual side. But this is just something that I remarked being here and meeting some people. And I really think it, uh, it has something to do with what we've been seeing here in Brazil lately and the manifestations of, uh, of the last month. But um, uh, I, I want to ask you, w you, you mentioned the cultural shock. I mean, it was not a cultural shock for you coming from Dubai, but was it a cultural shock uh, that you s noticed on the Brazilians when they saw you? I mean, is it your first time here? No, it's my third time. Third time? Yes. And the, the Veio episode was in the first time? It was in the first, yes. Tell me about that episode. I'll tell you about that. So the first time I came to Brazil, I was, uh, I was with a veil. I was using the veil. And a very funny story happened. I was, of course, very confused. I didn't speak the language. And I was walking on the Santos beach with a veil. You know, everyone else wearing, you know, swimming suits and bikinis. Um, and, uh, you know, people stopped me to take pictures with me, to talk to me. And one man actually came to me, and I think he was drunk. Actually, I hope so. Uh, he came to me and, uh, and started praying to me. And I think he said Virgin Mary. So I think he thought I was Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. So that was a very funny, I think it was a cultural shock for, for you know, this Brazilian in, in specific. I don't want to go much into the veil uh, story because I really think it could give us a whole show or at least 30 minutes. But um, I want to ask you, uh, th this veil you were wearing, uh, was it covering the whole body? Yes, the veil is mainly to cover the hair and to, to dress humbly and to dress untied clothing. This is what you know a general definition of a veil uh -huh. would be. And do you have different kinds of veils? We do. You know, you have different types of... It's a, it's a clothing at the end of the day. So you have different ways of wearing it. You have people who wear, you know, um, very like a dr like dresses you have others who wear normal jeans and a shirt and you know you have a whole veil fashion so the whole point is to cover the hair to cover the hair to cover to cover the body well i don't want to be simplistic i know there's a meaning out of it other than just simply covering the hair so that if you're bald you don't have to wear uh, a veil or things like that but I, I would like here at this point that you develop on this idea give me some give me some thoughts out of it i wore it for a year so i have my own personal um, experience, uh, my own experience with the veil um, and after wearing it for a year and after researching about it and asking people about it I realized that it's a very personal uh, choice and at the same time it's not a general thing each person has, a own, has his own her in this case has her own experience with the veil and each one could tell a different story about it there's a religious aspect, there's a cultural aspect, there's a philosophical aspect and I'm sure, I mean, um, here in Brazil, the religious aspect exists with the nuns that are in the church that wear it. So it's not very bizarre. As no, it's, it's not, not very bizarre it's at all. Th that's, that's exactly what it is. And of course, I'm not wearing a veil right now. So this shows that I, um, I, I chose to take it off. So I made my own decision. And I maybe have, I have my own ideas about it that others might not. So this shows that it's, it's, uh, you know, it's up to the person to make meaning out of it or to, to take it off or to put it on. Well, it's just my feeling here, but it, it seems you grew somehow international and uh, not wearing the veil, I feel, gives you a better opportunity to relate to the Western civilization, to the Western world, right? Yes, this, was, this is definitely something that I always look for, a universality, a universal understanding of religion, a universal understanding of culture and society. So it's true. The more I travel and the more I meet people, the more I feel like I want to find the common ground between everyone. It's not, a, it's not a utopic idea, no. But I mean, the more you travel and meet people, the more you want to get close to these people. And, um, and that's not, you know, some people might see that as a way of losing your identity, which is not true to me. To me, I form my identity based on the different things I do in life. Okay. Well, we will resume our talk in a minute. A gente volta depois do break com a nossa conversa aqui com a Fara Chama. Falando agora no próximo bloco sobre educação. Ok, até já. <música> 